Thank you to Harry's for sponsoring this episode. Too often, we gotta choose between quality and a fair price. But with Harry's, that ain't a problem. For a limited time, Harry's is offering their starter set plus a free body wash for just $3 at harrys.com slash death. Harry's delivers a close, comfortable shave at only $2 per refill. Again, for a limited time, Harry's has an exclusive offer for you guys. New customers can get a Harry's starter set and a free body wash for just $3 at harrys.com slash death. That's a $16 value for just $3. You'll get a five-blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, a travel cover, and a travel-sized body wash. It's an incredibly great deal, but act fast while supplies last. Go to harrys.com slash death to redeem your offer. Yoda, the legendary Jedi Master of Star Wars fame. And King Mickey, his highness of Disney Castle from Kingdom Hearts. These two have proven time and time again that size matters not. But let's see which of these tiny titans can swing their way to victory in a one-on-one -on -one duel. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a Jedi there was. Master he is. Yoda, his name. You're not gonna keep doing that, are you? Tell me what to do, you cannot. Okay, the mysterious Grand Master Yoda devoted his life to the ways of the Force and to leading the Jedi Order, a group of noble peacekeepers. They took it upon themselves to maintain a state of tranquility in the galaxy. Don't be fooled by all that talk of peace, though. They're like superhuman samurai. Jedi consistently take on hordes of baddies by themselves, and they've been doing it for centuries, way before the start of the Galactic Republic. At which point the Jedi became much more entangled in, let's just say, government affairs. Oh sure, that's what the space wizards were missing, politics. The Jedi Council began weighing in on various matters to both protect democracy and avoid violent conflicts. Except they kinda screwed the porg on that front. The Clone Wars wasn't just a fantastic series by George Lucas and Dave Filoni, it was also an awesome miniseries by Gandhi Tartakovsky. And it was a horrific war that wiped out the Jedi, erased the Republic, and saw the rise of the Empire. Sure, that too. Spoilers, man. As the Jedi Grand Master, Yoda led the Grand Army of the Republic, a military force almost entirely comprised of clones, aka disposable people. Man, that gets really messed up if you think about it too long. So I won't! Despite his small, frail appearance, Yoda could absolutely hold his own in combat. In fact, he's considered one of the most powerful Jedi of his era. He's trained all the greats like Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, and even Liam Neeson. Where do you think he got that particular set of skills from? All of Yoda's 900 years of experience certainly came in handy, like when he battled Count Dooku and Darth Sidious, two of the most powerful Sith Lords ever known. Both Jedi and Sith usually come with the standard issue lightsaber, a badass weapon for a more badass age. They're pretty versatile too, with seven different forms of combat styles. And don't think Yoda's gonna miss out on all that laser sword swinging! He's mastered all seven styles even though he's only two feet high! Hell, most lightsabers are taller than he is! Which is why he specializes in the fourth form, Ataru. This style focuses on utilizing the Force to increase a Jedi's capabilities, allowing them to attack at blurring speeds with incredible precision. Basically, he can flip-flop around like a ninja frog. Wait, is he actually Kermit? This does still mean Yoda has a sort of handicap in physical combat, as his stature requires him to use the Force far more than most opponents just to keep up. While the Force is beyond the body and seemingly infinite, too much effort all at once can put a strain on a person and even kill them. However, Yoda is truly a master of the Force, potentially more so than any other Jedi. He has moved starships with his mind and lifted hundreds of droids at once. He can also use mind tricks, illusions, and a technique called two to minus. That's when Jedi block or catch and redirect energy, like lightning, blaster bolts, or even other lightsabers. It's safe to say that Yoda greatly prefers using the Force in combat over his Jedi weapon. Wiz, if I ever get one of those laser swords and toss it away, you totally have permission to kill me. Interesting. Dummy, uh, just let me see your hand. My hand? Ow! Okay, now place your finger there. Um, no? Jeez, Marshall would never make me do something like this. Marshall? Who's Marshall? Huh? Oh, the DBX Ringmaster guy. That's his real name. We were roommates in college. He's helping me track down my dad because he's my best bud. Oh, best bud, huh? What the hell was that? Finally, I won't be the only one. 
Wait, what just happened? Anyway, the Force is capable of much more than a lightsaber. Kip Duron, a Jedi whose potential has been compared to Yoda, utilized it to move a gravity well generated void basically a black hole created by a ship. To strike the right balance of pressure in order to move a singularity, theoretically you would need to exert an energy output equivalent to almost 14 petatons of TNT. Jedi are also super fast. They have blocked blaster bolts of course, but they can also keep up with droid tri-fighters and magna guards, which both are clearly stated to have near light speed reflexes. Holy crap, who's building these things? Furthermore, Jedi can use the Force to glimpse into the distant future through meditation. They can even allow the Force to guide their movements and predict danger in advance. Needless to say, all of these incredible feats would be impossible without the Force. But with powers like that and a dash of political meddling, it was only a matter of time before these peacekeepers became soldiers. Even generals! In a surprising move, Yoda actually chose to engage the rising Separatist threat with an army of his own, personally kicking off the Clone Wars himself. Too bad it was, as the Fishman says, a trip. The war took a sour turn and the demise of the Jedi became all but assured. By the time they put the pieces together, it was too late. The Order fell into darkness. More like brutally murdered into darkness! And you know, it's kind of their fault in a way. They were so committed to talking about peace, but at the same time, they're like really, really good at killing people. Why do peacekeepers need to be so specifically trained in murder? So uncivilized. Wiz, get over yourself. If you had a lightsaber, you'd want to use it as much as you could too. Though the Jedi Order under Yoda did seem somewhat hypocritical, he would come to realize his follies. Like the Council's sanctimonious excuses for betraying students like Ahsoka when they were needed most. They ripped out our sweet Padawan red tail, you assholes! But yeah, he finally figured out wars not make one great. Especially if you're a tiny green muppet. Haunted by his mistakes and perturbed by the violence he helped bring upon the galaxy, Yoda went into self-imposed exile. He even gave up his lightsaber. And finally, he would train one last apprentice, Luke Skywalker. Yoda taught Luke everything he could before finally becoming one with the Force, gaining immortality as a spooky blue spirit just like Obi-Wan and Liam Neeson. And Luke? He went on to reverse many of the mistakes of Jedi's past, ending the Empire, redeeming his father, bringing balance to the Force, and inspiring a new, different generation. In the end, Yoda's greatest lesson of all was that oftentimes failure is our greatest teacher. I don't believe it. Mac. Is why you fail. Mickey Mouse, Disney's OG OC. You know him as a cute corporate mascot that hangs out with other cute animals and lives a pretty normal domestic life. But did you know he's also an insanely powerful warrior mage that fights darkness to save the Disney universe alongside a young boy and his good old duck and dog buddies? Not, not that dog, the other one. Ah, yes, welcome to the world of Kingdom Hearts, a collection of worlds where Kingdom Hearts is the heart of the worlds and the source of ultimate wisdom and power across all kingdoms and worlds. You know, my favorite thing about Kingdom Hearts is how straightforward it is. My favorite part is how it's ruled by that 92-year-old mouse wizard. Yep. Here he isn't just Mickey, he's King Mickey, the ruler of Disney Castle and the leader of the Guardians of Light, a group of Keyblade wielders who combat darkness. King Mickey and the other Guardians, like Sora, remember him, protect the worlds using magic and powerful weapons known as Keyblades. Those things are the real deal. They can perform a whole bunch of spells, deflect lasers, and even unlock almost anything. Get it? Is there keys? Mickey swung a lot of keys around, but his current and best is his star cluster. The king underwent rigorous training as an apprentice to the great sorcerer, Yen Sid. After some incidents involving a few too many brooms, he eventually became a sorcerer and keyblade master himself. Keyblades are basically like wands that can channel the user's magic for spells like Pearl, Mind Shield, and Faith Volley, which are all based on light energy magic. He can also heal himself and others with Kiraga and Healing Light, and that's honestly still just the tip of the iceberg. With the stops of spell, he can freeze time for the length of an entire battle. Damn! Then there's Mickey's most powerful and most legendary spell, Ultima, which is basically a massive, devastating release of all of Mickey's light magic at once. The only downside is these spells do require a lot of magic energy to use, which is also limited to Mickey's own energy. Also, he does need the Keyblade to channel it. There's not much the mouse can do without his Keyblade. 
Except for be a cute and cuddly mascot! Well, even if he does lose it, Mickey can immediately summon the Keyblade back to his hand. Whoa! Let me try! <laughs> Boomstick, if you really want another beer, just go get one. Oh my god, it works! No, it was just me. Well, Keyblades can also be used to lock worlds and doors in order to keep out Heartless, which are corrupted beings split from the darkness of a person's heart with a desire to consume. Wait a second, Wiz! Pluto is a dog, but so is Goofy! But Goofy gets to walk around and fight with Sora and Donald, and Pluto just eats and sleeps like a normal dog! This must mean that Pluto is Goofy's Heartless! Do you have a concussion? Oh, always. On top of all of his advanced magic, Mickey's mega tough. When Heartless stack up, they can form a huge mass and take the shape of a giant twister called a demon tower. And Mickey's tanked a couple beatings from him. He's also survived this huge explosion from when the Keyblade was destroyed. Yeah, he means the X-Blade. It's just pronounced like Keyblade, even though it's just one Keyblade. It Ah, oh, this series is so confusing. Most Keyblades are capable of equally incredible feats. Sora could slice through several buildings with his Keyblade, and Mickey's rescued him on more than one occasion. Which makes sense, he's the leader after all, and can match any of them in power. But Sora's no joke. He went up against Hercules, a demigod that launched a 1,600-ton rock titan into space. But that's nothing compared to his dad, Zeus. That guy can move stars, and not even he can compete with the foes that Mickey's tangling with. The Guardians of Light and their Keyblades are immensely strong, but they also have great speed to match. Roxas's heart was able to move far above the speed of light in order to travel across galaxies, from the Radiant Garden back to the Keyblade Graveyard in a matter of seconds. What? And like any great ruler, Mickey's also remained a constant pillar of hope for all, even during some of the darkest times. And with the help of his friends, the king was able to bring the darkness to an end and stop Xehanort, a Keyblade master hell-bent on getting the power of Kingdom Hearts. While Sora battled Xehanort, Mickey and the rest of the Guardians finally closed Kingdom Hearts for good, preventing the power from falling into the wrong hands. That mouse had it all figured out. The real key to saving the world is your friends. If each one of them also has a super powerful magic sword, that's also a key. Despite his long journey, King Mickey never wavered and led the way with his optimism, perseverance, and most important of all, the light inside. Now, Sora, let's close this door for good. Don't worry, there will always be a door to the light. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you want some extra force in the sack, try out Blue Chew. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew is an online prescription service. That means you can say goodbye to trips to the doctor's office, awkward conversations, and long pharmacy lines because Blue Chew ships right to your door in a discreet package. It's an easy process. Go to bluechew.com to sign up, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. All of that done online. I think that's pretty amazing. And if you don't like swallowing pills, that's no problem either. Blue Chew, Sildenafil, and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. It's overall super easy to use. So if you could benefit from the extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for you guys. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code DBC at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code DBC to receive your first month free. And we just wanted to say thanks to Blue Chew for sponsoring this show. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Difficult to find, you are. A king, you must be. And to challenge me, you must be a master. If you say so! 
My first duel? This is not. Ha! You could have fooled me. Proof you are that size matters not. <laughs> right back at you, pal. Hot dog. The force I must trust. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> you sure are strong, but it's time to end this tussle. Surrender, you shook. The power of the Force, you have not. I can try! All I need is the light! Huh? Do or do not. There is no try. Shame. What happened? Worry, do not. One with the force, I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh it up, Fuzzball. KO! That little green rascal, a troll to the bitter end. I love it. The Grand Master Yoda was one of the most powerful Jedi of all time, but the Force was ultimately no match for the light. Yoda's gotta be one of the best sword fighters Mickey's ever faced, and definitely gave him a run for his money. While Jedi have battled foes with near light speed reactions, a Keyblade Guardian like Mickey could move several times faster. In order for Roxas to travel across at least four star systems, he'd need to be moving almost 170 million times faster than light. They've also rubbed shoulders with guys like Hercules and Zeus, who moved whole stars. There are hundreds of celestial bodies there. The energy needed to move that many is way more than what would be needed to move a black hole. And while Yoda doesn't have much of an obvious weakness himself, the problem is neither does King Mickey. At least nothing that Yoda could really take advantage of. Even if Yoda could figure out that King Mickey had a limited amount of magic energy to cast spells with, there wasn't much Yoda could do before it would start to replenish. And the Force isn't exactly limitless either. Too much strain has been proven to put a lot of stress on the body and even kill some Jedi in the past. These two were certainly a match for each other in many ways, but the King's superior speed, power, and magic meant he had the last laugh. Well, sort of. Sorry, Yoda, but M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U are dead. The winner is King Mickey. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be jumping into the next matchup next week. But you can always get more Death Battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there and by downloading the battle music linked in the description. <laughs> <laughs>